Hey, Serio Rio family, it's that time of the week again. I hope you're ready and excited. I hope you have your notebook out, a cup of coffee, ready to watch and enjoy the preach. I'm excited and I know that you are excited about this. Please, if this is your very first time watching, just type into the comments VIP. We'd love to get connected with you and just to chat with you and help you to get connected with Serio Rio Church. Also, if you're watching from somewhere else, either be Australia or Johannesburg or wherever that would be, please type that in the comments. We'd love to know where you're watching from, get connected with you. It's amazing how we are able to reach people far and wide. I'm excited for today's message from Mark Bailey. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be equipping. But also, in this time, it's an opportunity for us to give. Although we might be isolated and the world tries to keep us away, God still says He loves a cheerful giver. Uh, our, our link will be, be here to follow where you can give uh, however the Holy Spirit leads you. And so, without further ado, let's enjoy the preach. Never met a match I couldn't handle. Get ready for a battle, cause you know. Wow, friends, I'm so excited that we are coming to the end of this amazing series, The Good Work. I believe that God wants to do something awesome in your life today. And today we're going to see that God doesn't only want us to start the good work, God wants us to finish it. Jesus did not send you from heaven to earth. He sent you to this planet for a purpose, for His glory, and for good works that He prepared for you in advance. And He doesn't want you and me to start it, but He wants us to finish. Last week we saw how Nehemiah them, within 52 days, experienced this amazing miracle of God doing, finishing this work with them. And today I want, I want to start with a video clip. You're going to love this video clip. It's a few minutes, just four minutes, of John Stephen Aquari. He was a Tanzanian marathon runner, and actually he was one of the favorites because he had beaten the, the, the Olympic champion before. But at the 1968 Mexico Olympics, this man had a great injury. And when asked, why did you complete the race? Why did you continue even though you had this major uh, injury why did you not join the other 18 that pulled out of the race because 18 people did not finish why did you not finish he said my country didn't send me 5,000 miles to start a race they sent me 5,000 miles to finish a race I believe that God did not send you onto this planet with just for you to start but God wants you to finish God didn't let you start only uh, raising your kids God wants you to complete that God didn't just call you to start some things he wants you to complete it Let's Great. As you guys saw right there, it's so powerful for me that this man had every reason, legitimate reason to not finish the race. And I think people would have understood because 18 other people cramped up and 18 other people didn't finish. And I'm, 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 I'm wanting to speak to you as you look at this image of John Stephen Aquari. I want to speak to you from, with your, your life and your destiny and your future. I want to ask you, even though sometimes things come against us and sometimes there's this, there's this attack of, upon our calling, will you and I not pull out the race? I want to, I'm begging you, please do not quit. Whatever you do, do not give up. Don't ever give up. God did not call you and me to give up. And today I want to say the title of my message is don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw away this amazing call that God's got for you. Don't throw away what God's got for you. I believe that champions have this one thing in common. Champions have the ability to persevere. They get the strength from God to persevere. Perseverance is a key word in the scriptures. Perseverance is how we take hold of the call of God, how we take hold of the promises of God. We persevere. And so today I'd like to get into the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles isn't that amazing? Throw off the stuff that dis discourages us. Throw off the stuff that distracts us. Throw off the challenges of the past and even the, the issues of the day. He says, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. And how do we run that race? Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, fixing our eyes on Christ, the author and the finisher. He doesn't only start, he finishes. Why? Because Jesus is the beginning and the end. He's the author and the finisher 
of our faith. I believe that God wants you and me to run this race with perseverance, to be confident in our God, to be confident in the fact that when God calls us, He will empower us. He will equip us to run this race. If God gave you those children, He's going to give you the grace, the, the strength to persevere in leading them. If God has given you that career, if God's given you that ministry, if God's given you this desire, this burden, this hunger to, to be a blessing to others, He's going to give you the strength to finish the race. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to take a few verses from Hebrews chapter 10, which I believe is so key for this season, and I believe it's going to help you and me to be able to embrace everything that God's got for us. It says in verse 19 of Hebrews 10, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, we have confidence, friends. Our confidence comes from the most holy place. We have confidence. Actually, Jesus made a way for you and me to access the most holy place. And you and I, friends, you cannot be confident out there if you cannot be confident in here. You cannot be confident in the world and in the call of God if you don't have confidence to come into His presence. That's what the enemy does. The enemy wants you and me not to feel any confidence to come into the presence of God. He wants to tell you that you're not worthy to experience and to enjoy God's presence. But God is saying, no, you can actually take hold of His presence. Verse 20 says, by a new and living way open to us through the curtain, that is His body, Christ's body. Verse 21, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with, sincere, with, with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with a pure water. See, friends, in order to be what God's called you to be, you need to be settled, you need to be strong, you need to be confident in who you are in God and your relationship with God. Because like we've seen this whole series, it all starts with knowing God. It all flows from our relationship with God. It all flows from our intimacy, from hearing God, experiencing God, knowing our God. Because those who know their God will be strong and they'll do great exploits. You want to finish your race? You want to you complete what God's called you for? Be strong, be confident in your God. Verse 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Unswervingly, friends, I want to cry out. I want to, I want to plead with you today to hold unswervingly to this hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. He says, for he who promised is faithful. Now, I don't know what you're going through right now. I, know what, I don't know what you're facing. Just like the Israelites, when they came to the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14, we see how in, in Exodus 14, the Israelites, they, they, they were with their backs against the wall. And the, all they had was a promise from God. And, and in Exodus chapter 14, we see how the Israelites are actually doubting the faithfulness of God. They're doubting the good, goodness of God. And they've lost their confidence. They're not taking hold of their confidence. And in Exodus 14, we see how when things go unplanned, it's not easy to be able to embrace the call of God. It's not easy to step out and walk through the Red Sea on dry land. In verse 12, we see how the, the, how the Israelites, how the people of God are complaining. And I see this right now in the middle of this, this pandemic worldwide. I see it on social media. I hear it from your lips. I hear how people are complaining, how people are saying we should have rather not trusted God. We should have rather not done what God said. Why? Because it is hard. Remember Hudson Taylor said, if God calls you to do something, it's going to be impossible. Then it's going to get difficult. Then it will be done. But in the difficult season, friends, will you and I not give up? Will we persevere? Will we press on to take hold of what God's got for us? Verse 12 says of Exodus 14, didn't we tell you that this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves in Egypt. He says, Let, it's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. See, when people have no vision, when they've got no direction, when they cannot see hope, when they don't hold on to the hope, because the Bible says where there's no vision, people cast off all restraint. They give up. They let go. Our friends, some of you, God has spoken to you about living a debt-free life. And when it gets hard, you just want to throw it all away. Some of you, God's spoken to you about praying every day and trusting God and doing your business righteously. Some of you, God has spoken to you about that, that specific business deal that you've got to persevere in. God has spoken to you about being involved and leading a light group or, or ministering to, to young people. Or God has said to you, you need to minister to people that are older maybe. Or you need to minister to the needy and the poor. And you're saying, man, it's getting hot now, man. I just want to give up. I should have rather just... No, friends, don't let go of your hope. 
Hold on to what God said, said to you. Hold on to what God has promised you. Have a fresh vision. Because when you have vision, you can embrace what God's got for you. Watch what happens. Moses, but Moses. Can you say but? But Moses is canceling out their complaints. And may we be like the Moseses these days, that we would speak words of truth and not words of lies and words of doubt and words of fear. Moses says, do not be afraid. Just stand still. Just stand on who God has called you. Last week, we looked at the fact that you and I need to stand. We need to stand firm. Having done all this, we need to stand. Stand on the promises of God. Stand in the goodness of God. Stand in who you are in Christ. He says, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Isn't that awesome? What a promise. COVID-19 you see today, you'll never see again. I can prophesy that right now. I can tell you the financial lack you see today, you'll never see again. I, I believe that the sickness you see today, think about eternity. God's called you and me for great things. Watch this. He says in verse 14, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. That's a word for in this season. Just stay calm, friends. Just fight for peace. Let the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Just stay calm. Why? God's not going to send a messenger. He, he himself is fighting for you. God is fighting for us. While you are battling, you're in the natural. God is fighting battles for you in the supernatural. He's done it. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. That's why when Jesus said, it's finished, he said, it is finished. You're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Amen. And then he says in verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? So Moses is encouraging the people, but he's obviously needing courage from God. And God is saying, why are you crying out to me? And my, I believe the word of God for you today, as you're watching today, is God is wanting to say to you, why are you crying out to God? Because I don't believe God wants us just to cry out to him. Yes, that's where it starts. He says, tell the people to get moving. Another translation says, tell the people to move. If there's anything that you hear today in this message, is that God doesn't want you only to cry out to him and to, to stand firm, but God also wants you to move. God wants you to move by faith. God wants you to take a step in faith. God wants you to get moving. Will you get moving today? I want to ask you, please, from the, from the bottom of my heart, will you move with God? It's one thing just to say, I'm going to do something. It's one thing to say, I'm going to pray for someone. One thing to say, I'm going to help and I'm going to serve and I'm going to, to pray for the sick and I'm going to share a prophetic word. But what about moving? Just start Moving, when we started building the, the building, we didn't have all the finances to complete, but God says, just start moving. I remember going with Glenn and, and Ethan and with Murdoch, we went motor, uh, motor, motocross, you know, like off-road motorbikes, and uh, we would go through these obstacles, and I remember Glenn to say to me, listen, if you're in trouble, move, open that throttle, don't slack down when you're in trouble, and we went through this deep ditch, and it was filled with water, it was mud, and I'm telling you, it's very slippery. You don't know. You can't see where the motorbike's going. And Glenn said to me, Mark, whatever you do, don't switch that thing off. Don't just keep on moving. Just keep moving. Because if you stop, what happens is the water, the obstacle becomes a problem. The water goes into the exhaust. And then you've got to be towed out. And then that whole motorbike has to be kind of drained. The water out of the motorbike's got to be drained. You've got to keep that engine moving. You've got to keep on moving. All you need to do is you need to keep moving. Now, if, if, if you stop, what happens is you lose all momentum. Have you ever tried to move something that, that turns something that's not moving? It's almost impossible. It's like you've got to pick it up. It's seriously difficult. What God is saying to you today, husbands, just keep moving. Wives, just keep moving. Business people, teachers, students, just keep Keep moving. Just keep praying. Just keep doing. Don't wait. Don't stop. The minute you pause, that's what people do. They pause, and then to get going again is so much harder. Just keep moving. And what did we see? We see when they just kept moving, God opened up the Red Sea. When they just kept moving, they walked down on dry land. When they just kept moving, their enemies were annihilated. I want to say this, friends. Just keep on moving. Don't stop. Don't stop right now. Don't stop just because it's getting hard. Don't stop just because you, you can't see the, the end from the beginning. Don't stop because you feel it's impossible. Don't stop because someone discouraged you. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. You need to be moving in confidence and in perseverance. Watch this. He says, 
verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another. Now, this is Hebrews 10, 24. Let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. I was saying that personally, you need to keep on moving. Together as a church, City on Hill, we need to keep on moving. That's why we're having multiple celebrations. That's why we're having our light groups. That's why our coffee shop is open. That's why the crew is happening with the young adults. ISB is happening. Ignite, music. We are going to keep on moving. But here's the thing, friends. In our moving, there's something we need to, as we hold, as we hold firmly to the hope, there's something that we need to prioritize. We can't just take the blessing we need to share the blessing we need to encourage others we need to spur one another on that's why people are like oh i don't need local church i can watch stuff on online you know i've got my i've got my facebook instagram what 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 i'm like god bless you but this is not enough god wants us to get together god wants us to connect with one another over uh, uh, online god wants us to encourage each other on whatsapp god wants us to spur one another on to love and good deeds the good works Spur one another on to love and to good deeds. Now, I want to say this to you. I got a phone call from Tony, my friend Tony, just the other day. And Tony said this. He said, he said, man, I was just in an amazing blessing. I was just blessed by this guy that I don't know from a bar of soap. Man, Tony had a, had a, had a challenge to, 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 to sort out. And, and we, I knew, I knew the context. I knew this is not going to be easy. And then when he got to this, this place where he needed this sorted out, this guy went out of his way. To help Tony, they usually are very unorganized wherever, wherever, when it comes to these issues. But Tony experienced someone go out of their way to help him so that he can get what's rightfully his. And he got a breakthrough in a short amount of time. And as he says, he says, as he got out, he sat in the car and he said, God, you're so good to me. He was saying that. He was saying, God, you're so good to me. He says, God, thanks for blessing me. God, thank you for letting this guy out, go out of his way to help me. And God said to him, what you've received, the grace you received, now you need to go and share that grace with someone else. And he said, Mark, I've got to phone you because God just spoke to me. It says it was almost like an audible voice that he heard, the grace you've received, now go and share that grace with others. Friends, you know how, how it grows. The Bible says he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. The way you grow in perseverance, the way you grow in confidence, the way you grow in strength, is you give what God entrusts to you. You share what you've received from God. Freely I've received, freely I give. That's how you grow. And verse 25 says, and not giving up meeting together. We need to meet together so we can do this. He says, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. I know that we are living in the end times. I know that Christ is returning soon. I know the day is approaching even now more than ever, we need to be urgent about encouraging one another. We need to be urgent about gathering together. We need to be urgent about being in light group, being in community, celebrating on Sundays. We need to be urgent about that because the day is approaching. Now in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 to 34, I don't have time to read it, but it's so powerful because he talks about the fact that you and I need to remember what we've come through. And that's what I want to share today is that one of the reasons why people don't have confidence for the future is they forget what God has brought them through. If you forget what God has brought you through, sir, if you forget what God has brought you through, uh, ma'am, you're going to struggle to believe God for the future. One of the keys to David's victory over Goliath was he remembered the lions and the bear. One of the keys to you and me, I've learned this, is that if God's given me financial breakthrough, then I know I can actually trust God for a breakthrough in my family. Because the same God that gave me that breakthrough can give me this breakthrough. He's saying, don't forget. Don't forget. Remember how you've come through the hardships. You were persecuted. You actually gladly accepted the confiscation of your property. You've been able to go through tough times. Do not lose your confidence. Hold to your hope. And then he says in verse 35, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. He's saying, no matter what happens around you, a lot of stuff's coming against you. He says, don't throw away your confidence because there's a reward connected to your confidence. There's a rich reward connected to your confidence. That's why, friends, when you lose confidence, the enemy knows if you lose confidence, you lose the reward. That's why we need to spend time in this word every single day. Sometimes I just like, Lord, I take an extra hour just to read more scripture. 
Why? Because I learned that my confidence comes not in what people say, not in the opinions of man, not in what News 24 or the social media says. My confidence comes in the one that gives the truth, and the truth sets free. Amen? Verse 36 says, don't throw away your confidence. Verse 35, rich reward. Verse 36 says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Isn't that awesome? You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you'll receive what you have promised. Friends, I've learned this, is that most people want to receive what they've promised, God's promised, but they don't want to persevere. Champions have this in common. John Stephen Aquari learned that it's about perseverance. It's not about being the best and being flashy. It's about what has God said, what am I going to do, and I'm going to do that faithfully till the end, until the end of, of the call. Run the race with perseverance. And so, friends, one of the keys to running your race with perseverance is, able, is, is the ability to keep on looking to the prize, is the ability to keep your eyes on Jesus, is not to get distracted with even your past successes. One of my biggest challenges in life is the fact that by the grace of God, I've experienced great breakthroughs, great miracles, and great successes. I've seen people get healed miraculously. And sometimes I can pitch up a tent there. I can park there. Instead of pressing on to more, instead of pressing on to more, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 says, he, Paul says that I might know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He's actually saying that's what life is all about. Verse 11, he says, he says I want to experience the resurrection life. And then in verse 12 of, of Philippians 3, I want to read that with you today. He says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved all these things. Why? He's saying, man, I'm not going to park. I'm not going to settle. I've got more. God's got more for me. He says, I, I might not have achieved everything or that I've already reached perfection, but I press on, watch this, to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I press on toward the goal, another translation says. I'm going to continually press on. Watch this. He says, verse 13, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Can you say focus? I'm telling you, friends, if, if we're going to get distracted, we're not going to press on. If we're going to get distracted, we're not going to persevere. If we're going to get distracted, we're going to lose our confidence. Let's focus. Focus. Moms, can you focus? Moms, as you're raising those kids, can you focus on the great call, the high call of God? Light group leaders, can you focus on the high call of God? As you, as you are business leaders, people in the medical field, can you focus on the high call of God? He says, he says this, he says this, forgetting the past, this one thing I do, I forget the past and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. Another translation says, I strain, I press on to what's, what's ahead. I let go of what's behind me so that I can focus on what's ahead of me. You know, the most accidents are caused when people are focusing more on their rear view mirror than on their windscreen. Most accidents in life are caused when people are focusing more on their past than on their future. When they're focusing more on what happens behind them than what God has got in front of them. When I last checked, a rear view mirror is this big and a windscreen is this big. The call of God, the future of God, the plans of God is far bigger than your past, friends. There's no future in our past. And so I'm asking you today, by the grace of God, to not throw away your confidence and to look forward, to look ahead to greater things. Yes, we're going through challenging seasons, but God, but God has got great things ahead of us. Greater things are still to come, and greater things are still to be done. Amen? I believe, now you might say, but Mark, you don't understand. I know I need to finish, and I know I need to press on, but sometimes it just feels like I, I don't have the ability to do this. It feels like it's not, able, it's not possible. You don't understand. There's circumstances that are out of my control. There's, there's world markets there's local economies, there's political challenges, there's things that are out of my control. And I'm here to say to you, friends, those things are real. Now, in Joshua chapter 10, we know how Joshua them, also, they were in the middle of a battle. They were in the middle of God promising them victory, God being with them, but now they realized that time was running out. Circumstances were against them. So even though they had a promise, and even though they were focused, and even though they could be confident, the day was drawing to a close. Now, if the day drew to a close, even though they were excelling in the battle, even though they were winning, if the sun set, that would mean 
that they could not finish the, the victory. They could not annihilate their enemy. They could not take hold of the very victory that they had. You might be right there right now saying, Mark, you don't understand. You don't understand my movie. I'm in the middle of the fire, and they've just turned the fire seven times hotter. I'm in the middle of the fire. Mark, you don't get my fire. I'm in the middle of the fire. And, and I'm saying to you, yes, I don't understand your fire. But one thing I do know is that God knows, and he's with you in the midst of your fire. And even though there's circumstances that are beyond your control, you can pray into those. Listen to what Joshua them do in Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Ahijalon. Isn't that amazing? He's talking to the sun in the presence of God, and he's actually engaging with God while he's talking to nature. Everything's against him. The circumstances aren't working, and he needs things to line up externally so that he can win the victory that's ahead of him. You've got some things, some circumstances that are beyond your control, some tenders that need to be paid, some accounts that need to be brought to, brought to, to a close, some, some circumstances that need to line up, education realities, political realities. How about we speak to the political situation in our country? How about we speak to the mountains that are limiting us right now? He says in verse 13, So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jasha, the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There's never been a day like it before or since. And watch this. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely, surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. I can sense the presence of God as I was reading that scripture. Because as I'm standing here, you say, Mark, I need the sun to stand still right now. May you and I be confident. May we be bold. May we persevere like Joshua to say, we're going to speak to our circumstances. We're going to speak to our, even if it's beyond our control, we're going to speak words of life. And God listens to us because that's what the Bible says. The New Testament says we can bring our request to God. We can come boldly into his throne room of grace to obtain mercy, to find grace and help in time of need. You can speak to your circumstances by the power of the Spirit. Now I believe we can finish the race. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7. Last week I, I spoke about 2 Timothy 1 verse uh, 1 7. But today I want to talk to you about 2 Timothy 4 7. And it says this. It says... You have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. Paul speaking about himself. He's saying, he gets to the end of his life and he's saying, I have fought the good fight. He says, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. May, may that be your anthem at the end of your life. You say, God, you've given me good works to do. God, it all flowed from knowing you and experiencing you and walking in your presence, fasting, trusting you, persevering, standing firm, standing strong and not getting distracted. But God, at the end of my life, I want to be able to say this about my life. I fought the good fight. I ran the race and I finished it. And I've kept the faith. That's my prayer for you today. If you're far from God, may you be able to say at the end of your life, I fought the good fight, the battles that God gave me. I finished the race. I didn't just start the race. Because God did not send you to earth to start the race. He sent you to earth to finish it. In Jesus' name. If you're far from God yet today, today you're going to get a chance to be able to become a follower of Jesus, to become someone that engages in this eternal reality of freedom from sin, and you can let go. You can let go of the sin that, that entangles, and you can run this race that's marked out for you, Jesus Christ. And God has called you to finish the race. Let's pray together. Jesus, I want to thank you for my friends and my family. May we be like Tony that says, God, you've been gracious to me. I want to share that grace with others. The good works that you prepared for me, empower me to not only start them but to finish them jesus i pray for those that are far from you today to have a moment an encounter with you and for us that are close jesus i thank you for your presence i thank you for your power i thank you for your provision in jesus name friends as you enjoy this time of worship may god do something special in your heart bless you we love you praying for you and we're excited to get into our new series next week bless you what an amazing preach wow that was powerful that was amazing I mean, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you were really equipped by it and strengthened by it. If you watch this, you said, 
You know what? I'm far from God. I, I never, ever gave my heart to Him, surrendered my everything to Him. And today, you feel that burning in your heart. You feel that in your stomach. It almost feels like butterflies. And you're saying, man, I need to give my life to Jesus. It's as easy as typing to the comments, F-A-R, far. Somebody's going to pray with you. Somebody's going to get connected with you. And also just stay where you are. Reach out to God. Talk to God. Pray. And, and let Him just fill you with His presence and His goodness. And also if you're just sitting there, you say, I, I need prayer. I, I really, after this preach, I realized I just need prayer. I just need somebody to pray with. Somebody to get connected with. Tap into the comment section. Pray. Somebody's going to pray with you. Get connected with you. To walk this journey with you. So we're going to go into a time of worship now. We're going to ask you, just stand with us. Raise your hands. I know it's strange doing it there in your living room, but please stretch out your faith and do it with us and worship with us. It's going to be a powerful moment. I see freedom when I see that 
I hope you guys enjoyed that time of worship. I hope that you were equipped and strengthened. And did you somehow have a brand new perspective on how you're going to approach this next week. And just to stay in touch with God. Stay in, in fellowship with Him. It's not just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday life thing. And also, if you want to stay connected with us, see what we're up to. See if anything new is coming up. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, website. There's so many places you can reach us and get connected with us and see what we're up to and just for you to also be connected please remember the the church is open up to a capacity of 50 we'd love to see your face and also we'll see you next time enjoy the rest of your week Your power has no end.